Peter Schweik says the oath of extortion, have politicians extract your money by votes and line their own pockets. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Thanks. How widespread is this? Uh, it's an enormous problem, and I think it's only going to get worse because it's very lucrative. It's a way to subsidize your lifestyle, and we've entered a situation where the political economy in Washington is, yes, it's about influence, but it's increasingly about extortion, where companies or individuals feel like they have to contribute even if they don't necessarily want to. And how will the attention you and Steve and other... Uh, news outlets are giving to this change it well it's only going to change if the people that are in charge of the reforms namely the politicians uh, get enough pressure in order to change them that's going to be key this is a classical example of self-regulation by politicians they get to write their own rules the rules that apply to us don't necessarily apply to them so I think with public pressure and with attention hopefully they'll be embarrassed or shamed into making the kind of reforms and changes that they should make there is one bill in the Senate by a Republican who currently has no co sponsor so there's no appetite apparently to change this at all let's talk about what these leadership packs are political action committees who can donate to them uh, pretty much anybody can but largely the donations come from corporate or labor union political action committees or for lobbyists generally members of Congress don't go back to their home districts and say hey I've got this slush fund I need you to make contributions so it's very much the insiders game so hypothetically there is a lawmaker who is on a defense committee I have business before them I can give ten thousand dollars to that leadership pack and then that member of Congress can use that money virtually any way they want. That's right. I mean, the way to think about leadership packs is it's like having basically a second pocket. The first pocket you have is your regular campaign funds. Which and is highly regulated. Yeah, absolutely. Very highly regulated. Can't use it for personal use. They get dinged on that. Jesse Jackson Jr. actually went to jail specifically on that charge. But had he had a leadership pack, Yes, you can, you can float it to a lot more uh, of personal expenses and sort of wide definition. And again, they get to set the rules. It's like us working for a company and we get to tell basically the corporation, don't worry about what I'm submitting for my expenses, uh, you can trust me. That's basically what we're doing with politicians. You suggest that somehow Washington politics is like professional wrestling in this kind of uh, pack. Yes, that's right. I think we have to start looking at Washington, D.C. As, as a political economy. And what is the incentive structure? The incentive structure in terms of making money, politicians raising money, politicians getting perks, it's not towards solving and fixing problems. There's actually not a lot of money to be made that way. You make money with conflict, you make money with uh, division, and you make money by not fixing problems. So I argue it's like professional wrestling. You think that these two sides really, really hate each other, but in reality, they're kind of business partners together. These leadership packs are set up with the idea that you would then give money to help elect other people in your same party. You would donate right. them. And yet you go detail through detail throughout this book. It's rich with detail about how most of these packs, or in some cases, they give more money to golf outings than they do to right. other candidates in their own party. Yes, no, that's exactly right, Nora. And What's I think the most egregious example? Well, there are numerous examples that we highlighted in 60 Minutes and that are in the book, but you have golfing trips. Some members of, uh, of Congress you know, spent literally more than $100,000 playing golf and they give a much smaller portion to other candidates. You have individuals, a, a congressman from Michigan, who actually spent more on limousine service for himself than he did in giving money to his colleagues. So this is a slush fund. It's not doing what it's supposed to do, which is help fellow members of Congress. That's why I think we need to have serious reforms. And people need to recognize that what's happening in Washington is not so much just that individuals on the outside are trying to influence members of Congress. That happens. It's also members of Congress are looking for opportunities to leverage their position to extract money and extract wealth from uh, individuals who maybe don't want to give but feel like they have to because they don't have a choice. Peter Schweitzer, thank you.